Okay, we're going to look into the wiki article here today on black supremacy. Now, I was looking up white supremacy because somebody kept, kept throwing the, the word in my face and stuff and saying that I was a white supremacist. So I was trying to figure out exactly what they thought that was versus what maybe somebody else might think that it is. And it seems like it's uh, anybody who isn't a white just trying to talk crap about whites because they herald in mankind, I guess, uh, you know, all the way through the steppes of Europe all the way east all the way up into the Mongols and China area the proto-indo-europeans that heralded it there down into India across Egypt of course always in Samaria around the entire Mediterranean the ancient Phoenicians and uh, of course Greece and Rome and Europe and all the great societies that we have today that kind of moved out of that area as it became a wasteland and uh, people want to try to change history somewhat but uh, black supremacy, uh, which can be branded as black pride or racism, is a collection of horrendously vacuous racist ideologies that developed in response to white supremacy. So it's the yin to the yang, if you will. Combating racism with racism. But somebody marked that out, yet it still stands. Because that's what it is. Many of the largest black supremacist groups are black Muslim separatist movements like the Nation of Islam, though black Jewish separatist groups like Nation of Yahweh also exist, but they don't really like each other, just like the same problem happens. Essentially, the more anti-Semitic, anti-white, homophobic segments of black nationalist movements such as the New Black Panther Party act as a black version of neo-Nazism. So, it's based on pseudoscience. The ideology of black supremacy, of course, is the mirror image of what white supremacy is, only they just put the word black in front of it. While different groups put their own spin on things, and there's no unity, black supremacy often involves the racialist pseudoscience called melanin theory, and the pseudo-history called Afrocentricism. Uh, now, the idea, basic idea behind the melanin theory is that uh, black is the natural skin color because humans rated, originated in Africa, so lighter skin tones are some type of aberration. Now, uh, of course, the Caucasians always were in North Africa. We find Hofmeyer's site all the way down to the Cape at 40,000 B.C., and when you look at the definition of Caucasians, they were always endemic to North and Central Africa, up through East Africa and the Horn of Africa until much, much more modern times. And then, of course, black people, other than the Nubians is the one that we're known of, really weren't out until the late Bantu expansion. And then, of course, slavery brought black people in. But they want to change that and drop out the whole primitive thing, the illiterates that were, no, they don't want to have that anymore. They want to change that a little bit. And uh, the, by a little bit, I mean they want to take your Bible and say it sh that it was theirs and that they were the Greeks and everything. Let's keep going here. These various melanin theorists build on top of this, posting all sorts of biological unsupportable claims about melanin, increasing muscle tone, brain activity, physical ability, etc. Some theories get into really bad shit theories claiming that Melican can grant paranormal powers like ESP, and I've even heard of flight, that they used to be able to fly, but mm, the whitey albinos took their magic away. And uh, so you hear these foolish things. Now, you talk about increasing muscle tone, but the people that win the Olympics are generally caucasoids as far as weightlifting and all of those types of things. Brain activity, I don't think we even need to go into. One of these are now spacemen. The others, if you look in Africa, I mean, you, you see it all the time. The pot belly kids, they can't sustain themselves. And none of that, again, is, of course, Caucasians' fault. They've done nothing but give billions in help, which is not appreciated, really, and almost like it's accepted nowadays, like a, uh, a mooch or a leech type of thing. And it, it really has to stop because they're never going to support themselves if they have their hands out all the time. Um, so, yeah, uh, yeah, they, they can fly. Afrocentricism has nothing at all to do with hairstyles popular amongst black people. I don't know why they threw that in, but there is this popular trend in black people to wear Caucasian mimicking hair hats, weaves and stuff they call them, to where they can look like white people. They get contacts and all kinds of stuff. It's a gross 
cultural misappropriation, you know, and, and it's, um, it, it, well, you know, they're already here in America, so they're going to have to wear our clothes and everything else. So that, that's it right there and everything, but everything they have around them and stuff. So it causes this inferiority complex and it causes this rebound where they, they, they can't quite go with it real well. Afrocentricism is a melanin theory, often cross-pollinate, but Afrocentricism is a separate concept, has a historical rather than biological focus. Its importance is to separate legitimate, legitimate historical revisionism from the kind of Afrocentricists engage in, though. The early histories and the ethnographies of um, African cultures were written largely by European historians and anthropologists from an imperialist perspective. This is what they say. Thus, these works are often skewed by racism and filled with factual inaccuracies and are outdated due to new findings in archaeological and historical scholarship. There have been many revisionist works throughout the 20th and 21st centuries that attempt to look at this history from an African perspective, but remain factual. And then we're talking about Caucasian North Africans, Timbuktu and Mali, and how that was all started by Caucasian North Africans and things too, uh, Queen Tinhan and with Mali and so on. And it's kind of well documented now. Even ancient maps we find show you that they were already starting the Islamic slave trade a little bit earlier than we thought, which is well over 900 years before the Americas even found. I mean, it was it was quite primordial, I guess you'd say, but, you know, after Christ and stuff. And, again, the Bible has nothing to do with black people. They're actually not mentioned in it, but they desperately want, they you know, India doesn't have a problem in it, and some of those people convert to Christianity, and some people all around the globe have converted to Christianity, but they all know that they're worshiping a Caucasian religion, which kind of heralded mankind. Black people want to try to switch it, and all they do is they go, see your Bible, that was ours. And it's it's really kind of disgusting. But I think they've let it go on for a long time because it's it's kind of comical and hilarious, too. And really just kind of shows a desperation. And I think they thought that they would quit once they realized what it looked like. But so many black people are gullible to it that they just keep doing it. Um, anyhow, uh, this this is simply an attempt to correct the record, supposedly. And Afrocentricism, and, 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 and there are a lot of records corrected. If you've been noticing on my videos here lately, I've done a lot of videos about uh, the the primordial Caucasians and stuff around the Mediterranean. And of course, you know, somebody wants to act like they, oh, they stopped right there at the edge of Egypt at the corner, like they couldn't keep walking around. And like that wasn't all just right, the same people as it shows well. You know, of course, the Egyptians had a red ochre symbology, and a lot of the other people they show are light colored. Of course, their women and their priests are shown light colored because they don't go out in the sun. And it's a symbolic thing that you can find in Greek art, Mitanni you know, Etruscans, Minoans, everybody around that area, and everybody knows they're pale, but yet they show the men to be tan and the women to be pale, but can't quite cognate, and of course, if it's in Africa, it's got to be black people they seem to come across, even though they, I know they went to school, and school says, not nah, above the Saharas was always Caucasians until recent times, then we start talking about slavery and everybody gets mad, but, uh, and, and as if the people that were currently there had anything to do with it, and they're not learning about it themselves. Anyhow, Afrocentricism, on the other hand, engages in distortion and fabrications of its own. One of the central claims of Afrocentricism is that Egypt, being in Africa, was ruled by a black superior race that apparently no longer exist and were not related in any way, shape, or form to the Nubians, or the West Africans who didn't even know Egypt existed, but they must have been black. This is some way to promote black people, but it's already well documented the West Africans had nothing to do with it. So the people promoting it aren't really bumping themselves up at all. In fact, it looks like, well, there were some black people that did cool stuff, but you weren't one of them, and it really kind of makes them look worse. But they don't see this from a third person's perspective. They see it as, I'm taking something, which is another problem. Um, they use this claim that Greco-Roman civilization, and by extension Western civilization, is actually based on black culture. So they have this idea that uh, the Greeks and everybody were knuckle-draggers, and even though they have a pyramid that dates just as old as the other pyramids, and they have an incredible culture, and then 
before even Sumeria, before even Egypt was going, Sumeria was kicking ass. And if you believe the India states, it goes way back farther. But it, in reality, it, it it doesn't. It's about the same time, and it's the same people sweeping through there. And I've done videos on it. The ancient Proto-Europeans that are that name that we probably can't say anymore, but who knows? It might show up here. Um, working from that point, though, that everything is based on black culture and then people proving that no because this guy was from greece so then they start usurping well then blacks were in there so then what happens is they they rewrite many historical figures like socrates as having been black content uh, conveniently ignoring the fact that he did live in europe and shoehorn various events into that ideology whenever you show that they married the uh, the the Matanis back and forth at the Amana period, then they go, oh, well, they were black. And you're like, well, they're way up there in Anatolia. Oh, blacks were everywhere then. And you're like, no, this is showing you that you're not. Rhoda just said the Colchians were, were then. They, they had darker skin and curly hair, and that wasn't different than anybody around there, but they did special linen and things, so, so they were black. And it's like, no, no one up there was black. And if we're saying these are the Egyptians, then it's it's another verifier, but... We don't have to verify it that way. You look on the walls and they differentiate very easy. You look in their ancient text and they tell you that black people aren't even allowed in Egypt, like the Semne Stele of Sinusaret III will cleanly and easily show you when they moved that boundary up north and they ran into them there, they killed them off, ran them off, and they said, you're not coming back, you're not mooching at my border. You can come and you can give us heritage though, you can come and give us stuff, yeah. And so when you see them in the temple walls, even looking like they're coming in and giving stuff, that was way up at Icon. But let's keep going. When called on their BS, they tend to justify their factual inaccuracies by claiming that critics are using Eurocentric methodology that is unable to ascertain a true understanding of history and that only those using Afrocentric ology can do so. So then they take people that know all about all the North African cultures and they decipher it and go, nope, Negroes weren't even allowed in and they go, oh, it's your white. And I'm like, well, everybody here was white. What are you trying to get at? And the problem is a waste of time. It really is. Um, so they say that you can only use the Afrocentric methodology and, and uh, it's listed under special pleading, by the way. And just for the record, Ramses the Second or Ramses the Great was a ginger, and it's well known that they've checked all these mummies out and all of their hair, which they can take little pieces of and look under a microscope and quickly tell you what kind of people they are, and they tell you, no, these are Caucasoids. They have blue-eyed statues on them. Yeah, there's a lot of them. The problem that people have is it's kind of hidden, is in. And I don't know why it's smudged so much, because we do know that the current population that's there is not the original Egyptians, don't we? Okay, so, I mean, the Coptics are only the remnant that's left, and they still have some admix, a lot of them. I'm sure there's some groups there that are really held and strained out, though, it seems. But um, at the same time, and that was all brought into the Islam thing and so on, it comes much, much later. But... The Caucasians back in the older times had blonde hair and red hair. Even the, the big burial grounds out there have redheads separated, blonde heads, and so on. There's a lot of documentation on this. But meanwhile, blacks hold their fingers in the air and go, I can't hear I can't hear you. We were kings. And it's like, no. No, you weren't. And then, of course, they're, they're like, we're all kings. And it's like, well, you, if you were all kings, then who did you rule over? And then they get real mad again. And it... It just becomes this envelope of idiocy, you know, and, and just uh, just mad. Then they usually start slinging racial slurs at white people. I've been called uh, albino, snow cave ape, and uh, a thousand things I probably couldn't say right now. <coughs> Similar crank claims point towards India, implying that the existence of those Negrito people that are there, due to some more slave trade, somehow means that the Indian culture came from black Africans and that's just false 
and the Dravidians are so dark that they must be Africans. And this is the people of southern India where they're dark. And if you look at their old ancient stories, they had the Aryans there in the north. And then they were uh, the dark. They got them together as a group, basically, after a big war uh, that they still recant back again and stuff. And so this was the ancient Aryans that had swept down. And at this time, they're just coming from out of China area. And they're not moving all in one group. This is just groups of them and people that are heralding it in. And apparently it had to do with seven Apkala sages that would go and do these things at these places. But uh, over and above that, China also depicts people in dark materials. Imply They want to imply that, oh, that means they were black. For example, the terracotta army. So, and, and well, the terracotta army is just not painted. You look at, there, they found a few of them. They're painted, they're painted in real light. But no, oh, that can't be it. And uh, so Japan, Jomons would have been black, of course. This is what they say. And the Ainu, which whenever you check them genetically, have nothing to do with them. But they do have something to do with the island people that have the dark skin, that are the Dravidians, and work into even Australian stuff that, again, aren't black people. But they also mention that uh, they used black bronze in their sculptures and were painted light brown which is clearly whitewashing from those Japanese bigots because they had bronze statues and then they painted over them. And uh, a lot of the Greek statues, people don't know it, you look at them and they're all alabaster, but a lot of those were painted in times. And you can see down in the hairs and things like that, they're still what color they were. A lot of them were redhead, blonde head and stuff. But of course, up there, you can really understand it. Um, so this is supposedly Japanese bigots that are trying to cover up the fact that they used to be black somehow and then magically changed into Chinese people and the Mongols that they try to call black Khans but Genghis Khan was a known to have blue gray eyes and whenever you look at him in the ancient arts and stuff and you can tell he's got a little Mongol admix but that ain't no strong Mongol right there that's strange and what's this wall of China stuff and I'll get into that in more videos here soon but in America, they rewrite Central America. Aztecs, Mayans, and particularly the Olmecs because they had wide noses on their statues. And I've got a video I just did. Well, I did it almost a year ago now where uh, there's a local guy that actually is uh, one of the park ranger guys and one of the guys that tells folklore. And somebody took a good picture of him. And they go, man, you look like the damn Olmec statues. Well, they just took and cropped him in there and they blend it back and forth. It's like half and half and go back and forth with it. It's in my videos. And uh, he looks just like one of them. Of course, there's another kid that they found. He must be only 12, 13. He's got to be 20 now. But uh, his mouth was real bent down a little bit and his big lips and stuff. And they show him more versus another one that the Negroids like to claim. And boom, they've got that too. Of course, they say, well, look, they got braids in their hair. And it's like, your hair doesn't braid that fine. That's fine. And then look at this lady over here. She's got fine braids in her Caucasian type hair of the locals that are here. Why do you think that, yo, you just, you've got to be anywhere but West Africa, and that causes a problem. Now, there's a study here in this talk about a Republic of New Africa that came up once. It's really been laughed off, but the Republic of New Africa is a black nationalist separatist movement that ad advocates the creation of a blacks-only homeland country. And we're like, man, cool. So we made Liberia for you at one time over there in Africa and y'all were all supposed to go back but some of y'all said you weren't going to act like this later but I, I, I guess you know hey things happen and uh, so that can all be set up for you again or another place and Chad's got this whole return to Chad 2019 going on right now and all that so um, this is definite movements to bring people back and stuff so you know no problem with that but they want to separate from the white majority uh, in diverse United States. And it's like, well, we're not going to separate the United States. In fact, the only reason you're still here is that we unified it. They freed the slaves so they could screw up the South. Lincoln didn't even want to let set the slaves free. You can look at all of his speeches going right up to the point of it. And he says that he didn't want to, that he doesn't plan on it or anything. But then he says he did it because he had to so he could screw up the South and get control over them. But uh, that's a whole nother story. I got a video on it, but it's really just a mirror of another guy that put together his speeches is all he really simply did. And, uh, but he did it in a real good format. Man, I wish I had one of those programs. Um, so what they want is this, uh, a movement was founded in 1968 though. And uh, this is of course after you know the civil rights movement come in 
And uh, people don't realize, but just at that time there, we decided that we were going to, okay, now we're going to let y'all try to catch in right here. And here we are this much longer. And you can see just after a couple of generations at the most, the problems that are coming out of this that really have nothing to do with reality. And they seem to be making up their own racism and then getting mad about it. Right? It's, 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 let's go on. They want a creation of a black majority country centered in the black belt region. And I don't know where that black belt region is uh, over in, I don't know, Japan. Japan's have black belts and karate and stuff, but black belt region where a bunch of black people are in America. We're not going to do that. That's not, you know, we can give you like Death Valley or something. So it's more like uh, Africa was, but I really don't even think we want to even think about doing anything like that. Um, let's think of other options. Let's see what, what they want to. Uh, they want a $400 billion payment by the federal government as reparations from America due to enslaving blacks, Jim Crow laws, and racism. Well, since the first slaves in America were the Irish, and there were six times more, they'll be paying six times that amount to all the Irish people first. And after they do that, then they can try to do it to the blacks. But I've got a cheaper advance. Why don't we give them $1 trillion? Give them $1 trillion to go back to Africa and even pay for the boat ride there. Nothing more. You're not going to take a whole, you know, but $1 trillion. We'll, we'll try to set you up again with like a Liberia or something like that. I mean, it sounds like a great idea. And now you can actually be in a country and you could try to do the Wakanda thing and make something great that you did yourself and all the stuff y'all have learned here now. Maybe you could do something. But this dissension in America and the enemy within situation isn't really working for you too well. And it's not going to work for you too well. Um, they want a referendum of all blacks to determine their desires for citizenship and self-determination. We, various black nationalist groups, have advocated for the creation of a republic for New Africa over the years. And a movement is still going on. Really? Who? Strange bedfellows, though, uh, here. Oddly, some black supremacist groups have formed friendly relations with white supremacist groups. Part of it may be both ideologies tend to promote anti-Semitism and homophobia. Another reason is shared tendency towards nationalism and separatism. Both ideologies agree that if the races are fundamentally incompatible with each other, and thus have the common end goal of a series of separate states for each race, only your state will be back in your land, and this will be our land that we came and made. And when it said, we the people, it really wasn't including anybody that's not Caucasian at that time. It's, it's a well-known fact. I mean, you can try to call it racist or whatever you want, but it was the origin of it, and they weren't even considering black people really people at that time. Well documented, so it can't be like fudged in or tried to shoehorn in, but... We have been trying. Some other people haven't been trying. They've been trying to do this. And it causes problems in their community. And they also have a lack of full families and stuff. I don't know if they're believing in this stuff, if they could lead them correctly. But if they're having a lack of it, it used to be something like 73% of black households were um, single parents. And uh, now it's gotten up to like 77 and in only in a few years, too. But that's the new number they came out with. And I said, no, you got that wrong at 73. And they go, this is from 2017 or whatever. And I'm like, wow. The other one was like 2014 or whatever. I, that's, that's radical. We've also gone, gone down in population in America. We've been importing so many people. So we're trying to stop now. But um, that they went from 13.8 to 12.6, or is it 13.6 to 12.8% uh, of the population during this time also. So they're not winning fantastically. Although on my, my side here, they like to jump on. Uh, I'll show Caucasian Egyptians in one of my videos, and then they jump on real mad, and they say, your people are all dying off and all this crazy stuff whenever they're not doing real well, and it's at their own, by their own hands. The sad part is it's by their own hands. Um, so um, if white nationalists want to move all the white people to, say, Montana and kick out all the black people, and the black nationalists want to move all the black people to, say, not Montana and kick out the white people, 
They both have the same goals. Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam invented neo-Nazi Tom Metzger to the NOI meetings, and Metzger remarked, they speed up, speak out against the Jews and the oppressors in Washington. They, all, they are the black counterpart to us. Support for racial separatism also tends to unite both ideologies. And, uh, you know, I think what the problem is, and they always put out this neo-Nazi type thing and all this, is that the Nazi party people tried to go around and find out the history of everything because they already had an idea on these Aryans and it had been well known. And then they come to find out that all of this that Harold in was all from these Aryans things and that it seems to be that humanity was all saying that it may have come from these Bible people, but if you even just read the Bible, the Bible people were like a nomadic tent people. They were starting at the beginning apparently under slavery under Egypt and had to get out of that and wander in the desert for 40 years because they didn't have lands and so on. And the Phoenicians are Canaanites. That's the same thing. The name the Phoenicians gave themselves is Canaan. So that's your Canaanites. Everybody says, oh, well, there's Phoenicians up here and here. And it's like, no, they were all the way around that whole thing. That's the same people. You're just calling the boating areas Phoenicians. And Phoeniques actually has to do with the Phoenix and it has to do with date palms and stuff. And they were kind of Johnny Appleseed with that idea and merchanting everywhere and bringing people written language like ancient Hebrew is really that and Greeks it backwards and stuff. And people have known this for years and years and years and picked it all apart. But yet there's still people thumping on that Bible. And then here's these black people who really were the, the product of the Jewish slave masters. So it's extremely ironic. But uh, the black supremacist sect that possibly or probably most promotes the anti-Semitism ironically identifies itself as black Hebrew Israelites themselves. And uh, these are people that now you can even see videos of them on YouTube. They go around wearing clown suits, yelling at people with a little PA system they have in a trunk, usually on street corners or shopping centers and stuff till they get run off by the police. And uh, they just go around yelling at people, usually white people, and tell them that they're not in the Bible, you know, and stuff like that, which is odd because black people aren't part of the Bible at all. No Hamites, son. Look up Hamites in Wiki. It'll tell you they were all Caucasians. It says North African and Egyptian Caucasians in that. It's something that's well known. I don't know what this foolishness is other than just some type of inferiority complex gone rampant. Um, this Hebrew Israelite ideology has its roost in postbellum Pentecostalism, which transmuted into black Judaism by blacks adopting the Bible. And back then, I think they used to mess up and tell people the Hamite curse is what caused them, which is foolish as hell, because then you get people to believe that, oh, the only reason you're on the planet is cursed. Well, they read in the story of the Bible, there's three people came out of a boat and everybody else was dead, and that's where all mankind came from. What? Are you paying attention? They don't mention India, Chinese people, Eskimos, Amerindians, any of that stuff. So they're really just talking about that area. And whenever you read the Sumerian tablets, they've got that same story, releasing the birds and coming back and everything. And it was really a localized flood, but it took out all of Samaria. The Tigris and Euphrates both flooded and took out all those cities and wiped out everybody. They got the hell out of there because uh, they were lied to. See, God said it wasn't going to flood again and gave them a rainbow and did all that, right? Well, it did. And so then Abraham left and came. For Abraham was from Ur. I don't need to go into all this. Anyhow, um, according to black Judaism and the black he Hebrew Israelitism, the newly freed slave of America's South were somehow the true Hebrews, even though they came from a myriad of places. They were all exactly selected. Now, the South Americans weren't but it was just just those ones they were special apparently that's that's what they want to feel like of course you'd probably find south american groups that say no and 92 percent of the slaves that came out of africa went to south america only six percent came to north america and so odds of that working out in any way shape or form the way they're talking about even if they had any relation which they don't would be phenomenally impossible so um 
They say they were the true Hebrews and descendants of the tribes of Israel, and you can't be not related and not have that Neanderthal blood in you and everything else that all these Caucasians do and not do that. And well, well, they've got some admix now. That's not going to count. That's not what we're talking about, and I'm, I'm sorry, but it's just not their book. They had their own religion they've dropped a long time ago because it's voodoo and demon, demon appeasement and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's just... That's, it's a solemn mute point. But uh, this assertion of being tribes of Israel, though, is an assertion that mirrors the Christian identity theology held by some white supremacists, which claims Aryans as the true Hebrew race. Well, they were the true Canaanites. Now, if you want to say that the Hebrews came in and they were somebody else, then they would have been this one little group of not coming in and of course they always act like they've got this great place there but what we know of as Israel was always owned by somebody else it was owned by Egypt and then it was owned by Persia and then it was it was always annexed and they were never there was never a time they were all on their own maybe for about 70 years after they got out of the Babylonian captivity but now we're so far in advanced time but that's where the Bible comes from it comes from that so far advanced time. It doesn't come back. Oh, it tells a story of way back when in the creation of everything. Sure it does. I can write one now. People used to be naive. Some still are. So, F.S. Cherry, a late 19th century proponent of black Judaism of their more hateful elements, also preached about a race war with apocalyptic overtones that would supposedly occur in the year 2000 and refashion society into one where blacks were the superior race. This is like the third time that was supposed to have happened. And uh, there's a video that's out where you go and meet these Hebrews and these guys got these long fingernails and they show you all the Caucasians in Britain and they tell you they were black and King James was black and King Edward was black and all these people were black and then the guy just starts asking him questions Mozart and all these people and he keeps telling them they were black there's a mural on the wall of the Pope getting trampled and killed and they said that's fixing to happen and of course that dates long past too this is all just I don't know they think some black space God is going to come back and do something and you know there is no black space God and uh, people that live in space wouldn't develop a melanin retardation like that on your skin to stay away from the sun they wouldn't have very much sun at all they'd have to create artificial sun lightning to keep from getting rickets and all that stuff on that boat in space if you will like they had to carry oranges and things like that to help keep from getting scurvy but that's a whole nother point F.S. Cherry a late 19th century proponent of black Judaism's more hateful oh, oh yeah the race war sorry the belief that blacks are the true Hebrews also leads many in the black Hebrew Israelite movement to espouse anti-Semitic pseudo-history such as the Khazar myth and Holocaust denial. And there are definitely videos out there where uh, there's one where they find a guy that's Jewish and they start yelling at him and telling him that the Holocaust never happened and boo-hoo and stuff and all this. And they're just yelling at him and they've got all this racist stuff up behind him on walls trying to tell him that they were the real... It's, it's real disgusting. It really is. And they're wearing clown suits and stuff and trying to mimic some half Egyptian thing at the same time. Just real confused. Real confused. And no one's trying to set them straight, really. They're just letting it go like some type of circus act. And it's gotten way out of hand. But yeah. So there's a look at it. And of course, it, all, it says, look at Clyde Winters and these other people. And I've already done a video on Clyde Winters. He tried to do a video saying the Greeks were... And he starts saying that Achilles and all these guys were. And he says Achilles was Xanthos and da-da-da, and that's black. And you just look up the word, and, and it means blonde hair. It means fair and blonde hair. So um, it's just constantly lies and known lies, too, which is disgusting. I mean, it's easily picked apart. And every one of these people knows the truth, but they don't want to admit it to the point that their, their jealousy overtakes over and Somehow they almost start believing this, but in doing so, they make their own racism up, and then they act upon it, and uh, in doing so, they ruin all their advancement and just can't quite cut. It's this, it's this odd thing if you're watching it from a third person's point of view. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's fine to 
worship the Bible, but uh, you don't want to blaspheme that God. It's one thing they say in there, and you don't covet, you don't lie, you don't bear false witness. And you start running down that line there, and what makes you holy in any way, shape, or form. But they can't, but the greed makes it to where they just can't get, uh, get um, eh. it causes some problems. Anyhow, guys, yeah, that's just what it says here in Wiki and stuff, and I added my little stuff over the top of it, I guess. But, uh, yeah, black supremacy, it's the yang to white supremacy, and all it really does is just hamper society. That's all it really does is just cause a big hamper to society. It really doesn't seem to help anything or get anything anymore, and then the blacks that are succeeding, it just makes them look terrible. The blacks that have actually, you know, of course, they're called Uncle Toms now. If you learn a good vocabulary and try to do anything, they will call you an Uncle Tom now. It, that's even gotten more disgusting. It just gets worse and worse and worse, and no one's keeping it in check in any way, shape, or form. So we get this type of idiocy. Anyhow, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy, guys, and uh, have a great day. Peace.